Hey everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of having gallstones. So we're going to talk about some of the medical conditions that occur when someone has gallstones, and we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms that occur with each of those medical conditions. Simply having gallstones is the condition known as cholelithiasis. So cholelithiasis is a condition involving stones within the gallbladder. Now it's important to note that a majority of patients that have gallstones are asymptomatic, which means that they don't have any active symptoms. And the prevalence of having gallstones increases with age. And although I mentioned that a majority of patients are asymptomatic, which means they don't have any symptoms, signs and symptoms and medical conditions do occur as gallstones travel through the biliary tree. So I'm going to briefly discuss the anatomy of the biliary tree, including the gallbladder and some of the ducts that lead to the gallbladder and lead out of the gallbladder. So here is the gallbladder and the gallbladder receives bile from the liver. Now the liver is here. It's not in this image, but there are two hepatic ducts that lead to a common hepatic duct and the gallbladder stores bile and that bile is released through the cystic duct, ultimately into the common bile duct and into the duodenum or the first part of the small intestine. So in the condition of cholelithiasis, as I mentioned before, stones are in the gallbladder. They remain in the gallbladder. Now we start to get into trouble when these stones start to move. If the stone moves into the cystic duct, we call this cholecystitis. So you can imagine that if there's a stone in the cystic duct, and there's bile in the gallbladder. If the gallbladder is trying to release bile into the common bile duct and into the small intestine, if there's a stone in the cystic duct, it won't be able to do that. So this leads to inflammation of the gallbladder. That's what cholecystitis means. Itis meaning inflammation, cholecyst referring to the gallbladder. Now, if that stone continues to move through the biliary tree, it can eventually enter into the common bile duct. And once it does that, anything that's trying to be released, for instance, bile from the gallbladder or anything from the liver is going to be blocked. So we're going to have inflammation of everything proximal to that stone, the gallbladder and parts of the biliary tree, and even the liver can be inflamed as well. And then if this stone remains there in the common bile duct, eventually bacteria can seed into this location, causing an infection, which we call cholangitis or ascending cholangitis or acute cholangitis. So before I move on to talking about the signs and symptoms, I want to briefly talk about the abdominal anatomy. So we split up the abdomen into four quadrants. So we use the belly button or the embolicus as the middle point, and we transect it. So we have a vertical line going through the belly button and a horizontal line going through the belly button. This splits it up into four quadrants. So in this image, we're looking directly at the patient. So this is the patient's right side and this is the patient's left side. So this would be the right upper quadrant. This is the right lower quadrant. Here's the left upper quadrant and here's the left lower quadrant. So with gallstones or any gallstone disease, pain is going to occur in the right upper quadrant. That's because this is the location of the gallbladder. So the liver and the gallbladder are in this area here on the right upper quadrant. And it's also important to note another location here in this area, we call this the epigastrum or the epigastric area. So this is the other part of the abdomen that may be affected with gallstone disease. So what are the signs and symptoms of cholelithiasis? So as we mentioned before, cholelithiasis is simply having stones in the gallbladder. We talked about most often patients are asymptomatic. So most of the time, most of the day, they're not symptomatic, although they can be. And one of the big symptoms that they can have is pain. So the pain occurs in the right upper quadrant and the epigastrium. What's important here is noting that the pain may radiate to the right scapula or the right shoulder blade. So because of nerve innervation, pain that is sensed in this area in the gallbladder can radiate up into the right shoulder blade. This pain is described as dull but intense, and it's a constant pain. And the pain that occurs with cholelithiasis is what we call biliary colic. So it's a colicky pain. It's sporadic. It's intermittent pain. And it occurs after eating fatty and greasy foods. Reason for this is that the gallbladder contains bile. When you eat fatty and greasy foods, 
the gallbladder squeezes, it contracts to release the bile. Bile helps to digest fats. So you can imagine that when the gallbladder is contracting after eating a fatty, greasy food, it's going to contract on the stone. That's why we're going to have that pain occurring. And it's only going to be intermittent because the gallbladder contracts intermittently and only after eating fatty or greasy foods. And it's a crescendo, decrescendo type of pain, which means that it intensifies and then it slowly goes away or slowly gets better. So the first 10 to 20 minutes of pain has intensification of that pain and then that pain slowly resolves. And biliary colic can generally last anywhere from one to five hours. There are some other associated symptoms of cholelithiasis, and these include bloating, belching, and indigestion. But what I really want you to take away here is that it is a right upper quadrant or epigastric pain that radiates to the right scapula after eating fatty or greasy foods, and it has a crescendo, decrescendo type of pain, and that pain lasts for one to five hours. Now let's talk about the next medical condition that can occur if that stone moves into the cystic duct, which is the condition of acute cholecystitis. So the most important symptom with acute cholecystitis is again pain. And it occurs in the same area, right upper quadrant and epigastric area. What is often noted is that the pain is more localized. So instead of a more vaguely located pain as we might see in cholelithiasis, cholecystitis has a more localized pain. And then there's a clinical sign that can be performed to assess if this patient has acute cholecystitis, that is Murphy's sign. So what a clinician will do is they will push on the area right around here where the gallbladder is located. So it's right underneath the rib cage. So they'll push down on that area. They'll get you to breathe out. They'll keep pressure on that area and then they'll get you to breathe in. If you stop breathing in due to the pain in that area, that is a positive Murphy sign. And then as with cholelithiasis, pain in acute cholecystitis can or may radiate to the right scapula. What's important to note here is that pain in acute cholecystitis is severe and it's greater than six hours. So as soon as a patient has pain greater than six hours, it's usually upgraded to what we would consider acute cholecystitis. Some other important signs and symptoms of acute cholecystitis include nausea and vomiting. This is due to right upper quadrant pain. Some more signs and symptoms that can occur with acute cholecystitis include fever and chills. It's often a low-grade fever, less than 38.5 degrees Celsius or less than 101 Fahrenheit, and it's due to inflammation of the gallbladder. So even if there's no infection, if there's some inflammation, this can lead to a person's body generating a fever. And there's some other signs and symptoms that can occur. These include diaphoresis, so sweating, and tachycardia or a high heart rate. So these signs and symptoms can occur with that pain. So you can imagine that if you have a lot of pain, your heart's going to race a bit more. And then also that fever and chills can lead to some of these signs and symptoms as well. Now, as that stone travels through the biliary tract, it can eventually lead to a condition known as cholelithiasis. So this is when the stone reaches the common bile duct and gets stuck there. And the signs and symptoms of cholelithiasis are the same as acute cholecystitis, that pain, the nausea and vomiting, but they also have some additional signs and symptoms. These include jaundice. So jaundice is that yellowing of the skin and the eyes. This is due to hyperbilirubinemia, so high levels of bilirubin in the blood. This bilirubin increases over hours to days, so an individual may have normal skin tone, the sclera of their eyes are normal and white, but they can rapidly become yellow in coloration over even hours. And this jaundice again affects the skin, so it's cutaneous jaundice, so the skin becomes yellow in coloration, and then the eyes, the sclera of the eyes, the whites of the eyes become yellow as well, that's called scleral icterus. So the reason why jaundice happens, the reason why bilirubin starts to increase, is because the liver takes bilirubin from the blood, conjugates it, and then releases it. But because the common bile duct is blocked, the body is not able to release that bilirubin. The bilirubin usually goes through the common bile duct and into the small intestines where it's excreted later. So this is the reason why we start to see an increased level of bilirubin and ultimately jaundice. And what's also important to note here is that jaundice may fluctuate. So this stone can move up and down. If it moves up, you can imagine that some bilirubin can 
leave and escape. And this can help reduce bilirubin levels. So this jaundice can actually improve. So this stone can go up and down like a ball and valve type of effect. And this can cause blocking of the common bile duct at some times and unblocking of the common bile duct at other times. So we can see a fluctuating jaundice occurring with cholelithiasis. And then with cholelithiasis, urine and stool changes can occur. And this is also due to the fact that bilirubin cannot go through the common bile duct and get into the gastrointestinal system. What we find is that stools become clay colored. So the reason why your stool is colored the way it is, is because of bilirubin. So if bilirubin can go through the common bile duct, go into the gastrointestinal system, it gets modified by bacteria within your gastrointestinal tract, changing the color of the bilirubin into a more brown color. But if that bilirubin is not able to get through the common bile duct and enter into the gastrointestinal system, it won't be present. So your stool becomes clay colored. But what's also noted is that because the bilirubin can't go through the common bile duct, it gets reabsorbed back into the blood and the kidneys filter that blood and urine becomes darker because more bilirubin is being excreted through the urine. So we can see very dark urine or tea colored. So important changes to note with cholelithiasis again is jaundice, clay colored stool, and very dark urine. And, and these can also fluctuate as well due to the same reason as the jaundice. Some other signs and symptoms of cholelithiasis include pruritus. So pruritus is an itching sensation, and this is due to retention of bile salts. So again, if bile salts can't leave from the liver and go through the common bile duct, they can collect in the body and cause itching. And some other findings of cholelithiasis include an enlarged gallbladder. So you can imagine that anything proximal to the stone can become inflamed and enlarged. And sometimes the gallbladder becomes so enlarged that it can become palpable, which means that it can be felt, and that's called Corfoisier's sign, sorry for the pronunciation. We can also see fever and chills occurring with gallstones and hypotension along with liver inflammation or hepatitis. So because of that blocked stone in the bile duct, everything collects proximal to it, including into the hepatic ducts, which lead to the liver. This can lead to inflammation of the liver. And as we will see, a couple of these signs, including fever and chills and hypotension, may be a sign of the next condition, which is acute cholangitis. So acute cholangitis is when there is a bacterial infection due to blockage of the common bile duct. So bacteria seed into this location and grow. So they back up and they cause infection in this area. So again, acute cholangitis or ascending cholangitis is a bacterial infection of the biliary tree. So patients can often be very sick with this. They can have something known as Charcot's or Charcot's triad. This is a triad of right upper quadrant tenderness, which is often severe jaundice and fever. So you'll note that these two here are very similar to simply cholelithiasis, but it's the fever that really gives this away. And then Reynolds pentad. Reynolds pentad is where the patient has right upper quadrant tenderness. Again, it's severe. They have jaundice, fever, and chills, which are all the same as Charcot's triad, but they can also have hypotension, so low blood pressure, and altered mental status or confusion. So when we start to see these, especially higher fevers, we talked about acute cholecystitis as having a low-grade fever, but if we start to see an elevated fever with hypotension, altered mental status, this is when we realize, okay, this is Reynolds pentad, this is acute cholangitis. So that is how we can distinguish between acute cholangitis and cholelithiasis. So if you want to learn more about gallstones and some of these medical conditions in more detail, including how they are treated, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.